Welcome back everyone. The Lakers are finally getting healthy again, and we got a glimpse of what they might look like at full health last night, with a pretty convincing win over a solid, albeit not great Rockets team. But regardless, the main takeaway here is that they're getting healthy again, and not only will that give them more options within their rotation, but it will make them more versatile on both ends of the court, allow LeBron and Anthony Davis to play fewer minutes, and many more benefits that we'll talk about during today's video. Before we get into it though, be sure to check out G2A.com for the best deals in your favorite games, credits, and everything gaming related. Check them out in the video description down below. But without further ado, let's dive right into it. And we'll begin by talking about the return of Jared Vanderbilt. Many of us were wondering where he would make his return within the rotation, and it turns out that they'll be bringing him back slowly off their bench. He ended up playing only about 13 minutes during his return, going 0 for 2 from the field with 4 rebounds and 1 assist. Not a great stat line, but you can never truly evaluate a guy like Vanderbilt off numbers alone. Again, he did not play a whole lot, so we really can't take too much away here, but I did like the energy they brought for them off the bench. He made a noticeable difference for their rebounding, along with their defense during the third quarter in particular. I talked about this a little bit last night, but they briefly ran a lineup including Vanderbilt, Reddish, Christie, Reeves, and Anthony Davis, only for about two minutes during the late third quarter, but I really like what that lineup showed on defense. They only gave up two points in a little over two minutes, with the Rockets going one for four from the field, along with committing two turnovers throughout that brief time frame, and they really had them in hell during that time too. Now the drawback with that kind of lineup is obviously on offense, but they definitely showed how valuable they can be on defense. The Rockets had trouble even moving the ball out there, let alone finding a quality shot attempt. And that's the value of having guys like Vanderbilt, Christie, Reddish, and AD in the same lineup. I mean, the amount of length and athletic ability in that lineup alone is pretty startling. You got the definition of a lockdown defender in Jared Vanderbilt, a borderline lockdown defender in Cam Reddish if he's not there already, a defensive anchor in Anthony Davis, and then a very good and improving defender in Max Christie. You won't find many defensive combinations like that one. And while I don't expect it to become a routine thing for them, I think they should do more mixing and matching with combinations like this one. I mean, anytime you put Anthony Davis and Jared Vanderbilt in the same lineup, they are going to be good on defense. But the key here is finding that value on defense without sacrificing their offense. Again, that lineup before was very good on defense, but they only scored 4 points throughout that time frame on offense. We're only talking about 2 minutes of playing time after all, but it would be difficult to make a lineup including Vanderbilt, Reddish, and Anthony Davis work regardless of who else you pair with them. The problem really comes down to their ability to space the court. They're not able to effectively run their 5 out offense with this kind of lineup combination. In fact, it's even difficult to run a 4 out, 1 installed offense like they ran before. And then if you would throw LeBron in there over Christie or Reeves, that would make it even more difficult. Again, nobody can deny how good they can be on defense, but it would only work during certain matchups. But in regard to Vanderbilt in particular, I'll really be watching him on offense. He often got played off the court due to his inability to provide 3 point shooting, or really any value within the half court setting for them last season. But after a summer of training with Phil Handy, along with working on his 3 point shot in general, I'm eager to see if he can take another leap forward. I mean, we often forget that last season was the first time he even began attempting 3 point shots. And while 32.2% is not particularly great, it's definitely a step in the right direction, and especially when you factor in that he shot 35.4% from the corner. That will be the main thing that he'll need to improve upon, but the other part will be his ability to move off the ball and make timely backdoor cuts. That was something they did not do particularly well last season either, and while much of that came down to their offense, I would put part of the blame on Vanderbilt as well. I think the only hesitation they have with putting Vanderbilt in their starting lineup is that, and while I personally don't believe it's a big enough issue to prevent him from being in there, they might feel differently. And the only way that might change would be with Vanderbilt showing improvement. He only shot 0 of 2 from 3 last night, but I don't believe that's enough to go off of quite yet. One of them happened to be a last second shot attempt, and then the other was the first real attempt of the year for him. Again, the real value of Vanderbilt will obviously come on defense, but in order to make himself matchup proof within the rotation, he will need to show improvement on offense. But regardless, I'm sure they're happy to have him back. And Darvin Ham talked about getting him and Reddish back following their game last night. You got a couple of your athletes back, just with Vanderbilt and then Cam who would miss a couple games. Uh, I mentioned that to Phil Handy before halftime and he pointed out Max Christie. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of standing out. So were, were there, was it a mix of kind of individuals and, and also just getting some of the athletes back? Yeah, I, I just think, uh, you know, the athleticism and the size that we have on our wings between Torian, Cam, 
Max, Vando. I mean, it's you know, including Bron and AD and Rui re returns. All I mean, we a plethora of uh, really quick, um, larger, <laughs> athletic, and skilled wings, and. Um, that's what's been, you know, I, I, I hate using the word frustrating, but that's been the most challenging part of, you know, not having all those guys in the lineup together, and, you know. But that day will come, it'll come soon, and uh, we got a little glimpse of what it would look like tonight. For a team that wants to build their identity around defense, I imagine it was really difficult to do that without Jared Vanderbilt, along with the majority of their wing depth at that. And that's what they had been trying to do for the past few weeks now. The Lakers are currently the 9th rated defense in the NBA. Not too bad given all the injuries that they've dealt with, but in my opinion, they are fully capable of climbing even higher. In fact, I fully expect them to if they are able to stay healthy. I mean, I don't think you'd even be crazy to believe that they could get to that number 1 spot. Again, they definitely do need to remain healthy, but I think they have everything they need on defense to get there if they do. And while the majority of what we talked about has been about their wing defenders, I think we need to give credit to one of their point of attack defenders, with that one being D'Angelo Russell. Now it's not every night they get a defensive performance like this one from him, but in my opinion, he has been a whole lot better than giving credit for this season. A lot of casual fans still refer to him as a defensive liability, which is really not true. Again, they obviously won't be getting a 5 steal performance from him every game, but he has been noticeably better playing defense for them. He's worked harder to get around screens, and has simply been a much more effective player on defense. He might not be at that Derek White level of defense like he told us where he wanted to get, but I will take this level of defense from D'Lo any day of the week, and especially when you factor in what he's been giving them on offense. I mean, the guy is putting up over 17 points per game, has nearly a 4 assists to turnover ratio, and then is shooting over 40% from the 3 point line. Pretty incredible numbers for a 3rd or 4th option within your offense. And if you're looking to trade the guy, then you better find somebody who can give them what Dilo is giving them at his current contract, which is pretty damn hard to find. The guy is only making around 17 million this season, not even half of what a guy like Zach Levine is making for example. I don't know about you guys, but I think the Lakers have everything they need to get to where they want to be. Again, they obviously need to stay healthy, but I think they should only be getting better from here on out. In my opinion, their game last night was only a glimpse of their full potential, and I know they are playing against an average team, but they showed me enough on defense to believe in their full potential. They likely won't ever become a great offense, but if they can get to where they want to be on defense then they won't have to be. And with guys like Jared Vanderbilt, Cam Reddish, Max Christie, and Anthony Davis, they certainly have the ability to get there. With all of that being said though, what do you guys think? How did you feel about their performance on defense last night? And then what do you think it will take for them to reach their full potential? Comment your thoughts down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that notification bell to never miss out when I upload a video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.